Hey guys, welcome back. This is Proof, and you're watching Tyranny. Uh, so I'm like Scarlet Chorus Camp, and uh, I'm going to talk to some mods because it looks like things have changed a little bit. Vittles. Did I talk to him last time? What's this then? The hard cut wiry muscled man who glares keenly at the two of you. Two tooth. Why the frig are you pestering my quarryman, Fate Finder? His tone is biting, impatient, and simultaneously dismissive. Don't know if you can see, but I've got a game to win. <clears throat> and the boy has boots to clean. Biddles shrinks in on himself. But there's nowhere for him to go. He looks to you, pleadingly, but says nothing. Hmm. This boy, he of proper fighting age. How the boy constructed from the possession of your gang. I don't know, let's see the first one. Grasps the lad's shoulder hard and pulls him closer, ignoring the boy's stifled cry. Is it like way over there I'm doing this? Oh. Yeah, over there. The boy's strong enough to swing a sword, so he's old enough to fight. Uh, honor guard on the young, this boy's exempt. Yeah, that's true. I'm aware of the camp's rules, he sneers, but the age of majority, 15. Take a look at this brat and tell me he's not. Just because he's lily livered doesn't make him a babe. 430. Southern tradition requires all non seafaring men to take arms for the village. Watch upon 15th year of the name, the boy, the young. Not yet served his watch, which means he's not of age. Uh, uh, let's drop this lore bomb. Excellent or luck. He sneers at the kid as if the whole thing's of his doing. Yet another winning streak's gone cold. Well, go on then. Get back to the slaves' quarters. No more fighting for riddles, is it? For now. Aren't you forgetting something? Children are valued and protected. Commodity in the chorus. As a member, as he's a member of a gang, you need to properly serve and protect him until he comes of age. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? He sneers at Vittles, but rather than shirking, the kid glares back, emboldened by your support. I think what the captains are, what the fate binders saying, is that you can't hit me no more. He smiles for you, green eyes, big and bright. Oh, this kid? That's who he's talking to? Right. But I can hit you now, boss. Um, right? But I can hit you now, boss. And you can't hit me back. And I can make demands like everyone else. Like I'm really hungry. And I want some boots that don't have holes in them. Um. <laughs> he grits his jaw. Ired enough that he looks as if he rattled vittles by his scrawny neck. But he merely flicks two fingers along the underside of his stubbed, scratchy chin and darts a nervous glance towards his archon portent. I get it, children are sheltered by the voices. His throat constricts as he nervously swallows a mix of bile and vagrant's chaw. I'll look out for the kid, I swear. Won't any harm come to him, or it'll be my prick what gets chopped. He offers you a final cold nod before shuffling back to his game of dice. Oh, oh they're talking about this little kid. <laughs> He's confused. Alright. Um, I could probably rest. Who's Siren? A young woman stands flanked by a pair of soldiers. The ornate headdress crusting her brow lends her otherwise small figure an intimidating aspect. From gear to gown, everything about her starkly contrasts the wretched state of the camp. She looks both at ease and uncomfortable, composed in her element and completely unsure. She turns to you. Her face takes on a mock serious demeanor as she speaks, and with her words you hear the sound of a breeze rustling through the forest. It's at the same time calming and distressing. The girl smiles. Do you remember me, Fate Binder? No, no. that was not me. You used my cloth as chaff for the Scarlet Chorus. You took my people, the followers of Siren, the Archon of Song. Hmm. She takes a small step forward, and the soldiers to her side move in, barring passage with their weapons. She looks at them and rolls her eyes. When she does, the sound of approaching storm fades. Do I look like I can hurt her? She returns her gaze to you and leans forward as if to share a Please. secret. Good people aren't here for my protection. Apparently, I'm the dangerous. But I guess you already knew that. Can't have me collecting followers again like I did in Rathlin's Crossing, can you? <laughs> if some people started worshipping me, is that really such a bad thing? 
Is Kairos really so insecure to worry about a little competition? <laughs> Interesting. Look at me. Do you think I seem dangerous? What harm can a 15-year-old girl cause? Why are you crying? So, the smile falters. She looks down, her hand moving to the headdress, her thumb tracing the edge of it along her jawline. She looks back up, the hard look back in her eyes. She regards you for a moment before continuing. So, Tunon's fate binder in the middle of the battlefield. Kairos must be desperate. You were sent to shame and ask the Narak into action, weren't you? Ash certainly needs someone to dig a heel into his back, if only to distract him from his problem. She purses her lips in thought. But, but Narak, or is this a cat playing with a realm-sized mouse over me? What problem does Ash have? have an urge? Now I find that fascinating. A representative of Cairo sent to deal with the Archons, and you weren't told the whole story. How scandalous. The disfavored are very close with one another. If one is lost, it's practically like losing a family member. Can you imagine how Ash feels after losing a handful of his men? Yeah, I get that. Anyway, <coughs> we have a more important matter to deal with. There is something you can do to assist me. Who is there? In the corner of your eye, I see Verse cup her hands to her ears, turning her head away from Siren. Siren's mouth opens in a perfect O shape. The sound that pours out is captivating, entrancing, dampens the ambient bustle of the camp, till it seems that nothing exists but her voice. Remove my helmet. Aw, oh, shit. <laughs> Looks like I'm forced to do this no matter what. Um, ah, that's annoying. At your service. You discover that Saren's helmet is locked behind her head with a complicated mechanism. You want nothing more than to bash the lock apart and free the Archon, satisfying her command. Before you can make the attempt, one of Saren's guard places her hand on yours and shakes her head. She points to a wad of cock sticking in her ear. The distraction shakes you from your stupor. You feel dizzy and sniff back a trickle of blood from your nose. What was that? That's it. How disappointing. It was worth a try, I suppose. Though it appears to have been a colossal waste of effort. She sighs and gives a sheepish smile. I hoped you would assist me in a delicate matter. But it appears you're more nuisance than help. I have no further use for you. Perhaps later. You'll dismiss, Fatebinder. He'll answer some questions from you first. I said dismiss until I have further need of you. Your presence displeases me. For the love of Kairos! That was the Archon of Dawn in the flesh! <laughs> we go way back. You know the Archon. <laughs> I dare say, battling with you will prove most illuminating. All right, where's my lore at? Where's lore thirty-four? <laughs> I guess he just needs to engage in more conversations. Don't have very good wits though with her, do I? Nope. Who's this? That's the shopkeeper. He's got some new items. Fire eye stone. Use this. Oh, makes you control fire better. It's an accessory, interesting. Expression, accent, and of course, such a vigor. I think I actually need to buy that. Hmm. I guess I just can't do it in the screen right now. Do I have enough money for this? Increases accuracy of spells. Channeled strength. Cone, eh? That's kind of cool. Hmm. Well, we'll wait for a little bit. These are all fine, are they? Let's see. All upgrades. 
Anyway, we'll pass on that for now. Give them this expression. Alright. Sorry, I can't. Let's see if he does anything for me. No. Oh, who are these? Night Yowl. A young beast man stands in the shadow of an enormous beast woman whose stature still manages to loom over you, even in a crouched position. The beast man's mouth froths with spittle that launches in every direction as he snarls at her. Night Yowl was promised worthy, tough prey for joining, but Beast Woman only allows Night Yowl to hunt weakest of humans. Saves best skills for self. He pounds the earth, causing a small fissure to erupt. Night Yowl was second strongest of stone stalker males before joining Scarlet Humans. Rotted even with hundred blood, with tribes prime. Rima <laughs> was promised to unpack for abandoning tribe mates. The crouch beast woman lets out a deafening cackle, her broad, sharp teeth appearing between each bellow. Strong stone stalker, beast man worth writing, she snorts. No, claws at throat sees only mewling first season cub before beast woman now. Sees only tenderfoot, only weak whelp, fit to chase injured, dying prey, not best fighters on the battlefield. Nael bares his teeth and lunges for the beast woman, but she is swift to stand, hackles raised, and a calloused palm far larger than his head harshly pins him to the ground in one deft swipe. His face smashes into the earth with a whip-like crack of stone followed by a defeated whimper. Claws at throat stares down at you with as much regard as she might show the wild dogs that roam the camp. Human. Nostrils perk and she rapidly scours her memory for your familiar scent. Then a sharp tooth grin slowly spreads across her face. Human reeks of blood mud death, of triumph and gnashing, wailing teeth. Beast woman can smell. Human is better fighter than runt called Night Yowl. She grinds the beastman's face deeper into the dirt before lifting her clawed and gnarled fingers off him. He quickly scrambles to his feet to nurse his head. Speak quickly and maybe Beast Woman will listen. <laughs> Pit fighter. The Beast Woman snorts, a stab of incredulity opening the features of her face. Then she howls with racking full body laughter. Human is bold as Kith, is born hunter, like Beast Woman. If Claws at Throat did not have run whelp or cur like now yell, the trained beast would happily enjoy fighting. Hmm. I wonder what happens if I click it again. Oh, just the same thing. What's going on here? Human has keen eyes, can see Beast Woman is disciplining insolent pack mate. She snaps a menacing sneer at the cowed beast man. Mewling, whimpering male night yowl will learn Beastman's rank and new pack, but will not survive for many seasons longer. Night yowl. A soft growl burbles up from the back of his throat in response to her threat, but he keeps his eyes downcast, refusing to meet her gaze. Oh, what that is. Hmm, how did you come to join the Stark Scarlet? Chorus. Human pack called Scarlet Horse is vicious, cunning, feral like tribes, like Beast Woman. She snarls, but the sound is pleased and rumbling, nearly a purr as she cranes her face in the direction of the voices of Narat's war tent. Chorus humans are dirty and reek like rotten meat, so easily shriek and tear at own throats, but also respect strongest of pack. And Beast Woman are strongest of all creatures, our best predators, like Archon called Narat. Pack's fierce and ruthless alpha is mystic who can swallow prey, blood, bones, whole. Makes Beast Woman want to rut, fight, kill. We'll fry our tribe are you from? Yada yada yada. Sorry guys, I'm getting tired of all this chatter. Night Yowl. Alright. Two Tooth. Is there any reason to speak to him again? These guys are doing over here. Nope, I'm not gonna say. Okay, let's go to the other camp then. this all right let's go up to the disfavored camp
yeah, load times in this game. Sometimes my computer freezes like this. Which is incredibly hurting. Normally it recovers. We'll see. If not, I'll cut the video early. <clears throat> There you go. It's a missive. Received a missive. A short message is carried by birds between distant parts of Kairos' empire. Click on the missive icon or press V. Interesting. What's that? Here. So, what's this? You're not completely without our senses. We knew Kairos would issue an edict. Who's this? Entering guard <coughs> on our valley. Perhaps the overlord has a sixth sense even more. But I can sure I laugh when I learned the death sentence loomed the oath breaker and Papa decoy. Doom, sorry. I had such low expectations for the servant of the so called Archon of Justice. Tunan seems little more than a passive stooge that sits on a throne to legitimize the carnage and plunder of the other Archons. They face a prosperity that lets Kairos claim one thing while being another. I would have hoped you actually did serve justice, the notion, not the Archon, but your actions have said otherwise. At least I can thank you for proving my cynicism entirely warranted. If you survive this upcoming slaughter, bear witness that I, Tarkas Ari of the Vendoring Guard, do take responsibility for the actions of my crew. Should my warriors come before the court's axe, tell Tuna that they were starving, desperate, and easily manipulated into a struggle that was mine and not theirs. Sell this lie as well as you would sell the lies of the Overlord. Interesting. Alright. Definitely gonna have a much better time the second time through. What's this? Fears it's crashing. Now here we go. I'll take that under advisement. Now I'll just be leaving. No need to trouble you folks for Surrounded by a quartet of disfavored soldiers that have a physically boxed in, a scarlet corpse warrior clutches a disfavored helmet. Visibly pale and sputting, he wears a terrible, trembling grin. Come lads, no need to be so touchy. Oh, uh, you can leave, but the helmet stays. The soldier steps closer, her bulk crowding the requirement. We don't take kindly to iron thieves, so if you think you can just stroll out here without a flogging, you are sorely mistaken. One of the disfavored soldiers turns to you, looking aware from debate. This one here stole from the Legion and thinks he can get away with it. She points to the chorus warrior, clutching the helmet. If he takes one more step, we'll be forced to violate Kairos' peace. Hey, Barna, can you hear me out? I'm being custed by these disfavored thugs. Don't make the fate binder complicit in your theft. His favorite armor is a property of the legion that's not yours to loot. And by graven ash, I will cut you down if you even try to leave with the relic. Hmm. Someone mentioned this involves me whether you like it or not. We can make this a trial of who stands here the longest. And when our bladder's loosen, at least I won't be the one wearing an iron diaper. But I'd much rather let the fate binder settle it, seeing as there's no other way out of the impasse. Enough! The disfavored warrior rears back a bowed fist before hesitating, sensing her lapse, and awkwardly returning her hand to her side. The choice is to adjudicate or fight, then I too will abide by the fate finder's decree. Alright. Let's see the helmet. Long quiet nod. Inspect the helmet. Ah, standard issue. Nod is ornate. This helmet made for the Iron Guard. This is a rare piece of forge work. Interesting. It belonged to an Evocatus, someone of many years in the Legion. Gained favor with Tunon. Lost the Iron Walker helm. It's clearing her throat, the disfavored reaches to her belt. Then this is more important than a few rings. She produces a pair of bronze rings and holds them towards the requirement. Consider this your finder's fee, and payment to never bother us again. Deal. In the blink of an eye, the requirement thrusts the helmet into the hands of the warrior and snatches the rings. Pleasure doing business. 
We do lots and losses. Only appraisers charge for their services. <laughs> Alright. Just gain some favor, salute to them. That guy's happy. Hey, we already sorted with this. Why are you guys still standing there? See what Rona's saying. You got any goods for me, partner? What might I do for you? See something you like? Let's see the wares. Um, no, no spells or nothing. It's the only one I want to keep an eye out on. I'll talk to him. What about him? Welcome back. Cross his arms. Nothing to say, eh? Who's this guy? Oh yeah, forgot about him. Right, I got the iron for him. Here it is. Gain favor, got a bunch of loot. Let's see what you got now. Nice, finish the quest. So you've got some magic equipment, I guess. Jacks would be pretty good for me, I suppose. Extra armor, less recovery. Guess if I want to go tanky. Anyway, we won't uh, bother with that for now. Let's see if the marshal has anything to say. Holds her arm looking at me expectantly. Who's the strongest? Sevius the younger than Barrack. Eric. Well, what? I'm neither dead nor fragile. Say what you were going to say. I was going to say that you're perhaps one of the best warriors in the outfit, but good luck getting you to wear your regulation uniform. You're a good soldier, Barrack, but you know you're a pain in my ass. I'm honored to be assigned one of your finest. Alright, the honor's mine. What's your role? Commander of the Iron Guard, Swordmaster of the Disfavored, and Captain of the Lord Boreal Company. Send me my next Ash. Where have you seen battle? Back to my other questions. What can you tell me? Farewell. Alright, just give me a chance to gain some favor, I suppose. I don't know if there's anything down do here. Do Alright, I think it's time to go in the tent. Could rest, I suppose. Four days to the edict, that's lots of time. Oh. Maybe it doesn't take half an hour to load the skin. So it seems to always. I've always had problems with the loading time. I don't know if it's my computer or if. If it takes everyone along, I'm not sure. It always chokes up. Alright, here we go. If you don't give these oathbreakers enough credit, even beasts can begin to see the pattern. If there's any pattern in my strategies, it's one of relentless victory. The tears will excel at deception. Who's more deceitful? Why is this going so quick? <laughs> I can't read that quick. For a second, what's your plan for dealing with the walls now? Standing pyramid? <laughs> That's a good one. The Archon of Stone was punished for his actions. If you want to talk guilt by association, I would be happy to hold you accountable for the collector of something. In his favor, warrior could take ten of these helpful for the fruit knife. Excuse me. These guys both bicker so much. All right, let's uh, let's see how we can resolve this. Ugh, why is it fucking freezing like this? Oh no! How can we 
There we go. Okay. Oh, you're so young. You can do anything, stupid. Without your Archon of Stone to bring down those walls, you're out of your element. Only the Chorus has the numbers required to swarm. The best the Chorus could accomplish would be leaving a rat-faced pile of corpses propped up against a wall. Another brilliant idea. Can cultists destroy every bit as trustworthy and sane as the late Archon of Stone himself. Ah, uh, you did notice the spire at the center of the citadel? Well, I can miss it, being only the tallest thing on the horizon and such. Certainly your Earth Maiden wouldn't do anything stupid like, say, raping the spire's foundation. What could possibly go wrong? I trust them more than I trust your circus of rapists Shell swords and turncoat spear things. Soon on Space Finder has arrived. Our operations in Echo Call Crossing and Trip Nettle Wilderness were success. Why aren't you two marching towards Ascension Hall? Nothing would please us more than to be done with this wretched valley. I wish that we had more support from the disfavored. That bloody corpse. Now that we are all assembled, I want reports. The Scarlet Chorus is going to resolve the Oathbreaker presence in the Outer Valley. Yes, what did become of that? We should know already, yet we do not. Mm, this is sketchy. After this uh, conversation here, I'm going to end the video. The Oathbreaker Raiders were broken, and most importantly, their captain was taken. And he has told us... The Archon of Secrets grips his helmet as a chattering percussion of whispers pour forth. Nothing. Nothing. Curse you motherless fucks! What have you brought but fire and such? <laughs> suffering just... Oh, suffering doesn't even capture the nuance of what we've done. Apologies. We've been so young as one with stiff pipes. We know much of their inner workings. Their desperate allies, their foolish hopes. This is our battle to lose. Why I am on equal footing with Kairos' clown, I will never understand. So, Space Finder, you would deem this mission successful, then? Hmm. Was renowned for skill at arms. He was a boastful leader from an influential family. This is annoying. Ah, what just happened? Okay, I understand. We've established a foothold across Matani Report. Securing the Matani is a gruesome affair. It's in the school and tide still lives. Uh, the day ended a success. They came to secure the nearby Echo Call village. There was a dis Echo Call. That's it. A distressing discovery. The villagers had been stashing iron weaponry. Um, yeah. A few of them got away, but the leader did not. Spies tell us she was one of the founding members. Her death was no doubt just her. Have we forgotten why we marched south in the first place? Are we to rule over a sea of corpses? Have you any idea how difficult it is to catch dead people? Your treatment of the locals is short-sighted. <laughs> we alone follow the commandments of the Overlord. Okay, as if to emphasize his words, the conductor's wand, the voices were not, flourishes his jeweled scepter in the air. It's safe with Sunkarus. Wants some bloodshed. My intent was to honor the chorus and bring to a captive, but it would have taken a gang of warriors with nets to take her alive. Oh, so Kairos commanded you to be an insufferable ass at every turn. If so, good job. Hmm. <laughs> Defend your sensibilities, dear friend. No. These are my allies. Why bother with the enemy? Even the low-born oathbreakers have the honor and decency to. The Arkan War of War slams them all to the ground with the bone rattling thud. Oh, finish your thought, old chap. They have the honor and decency to. To what? 
to abide by some sort of deal you made with them? Scowling at the archive, a secret Graven Ash says nothing, his body heaving with agitation. If you two are willing to work together, or will order you a truce with the Oathbreakers. Is this true? Enough, we're running out of time. Our survival is at stake. All that matters is taking Ascension Hall. I am marked. You will do as we order. Then the impasse is clear. We both reach for the honor. <sighs> the honor. So annoying. Since Krunom is not here to so With whom do you stand? Who should lead? The disfavored or the chorus? Me. I don't know, man. Uh, these guys are both douchebags. I don't care about either of them. Hmm. That's really the thing. Bottom line, I really don't care about either of them. Um. Disfavored will lead, I suppose, or the chorus. All right. Let's try. Beloved chorus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have too many lives to protect. We can't have too. It'll be fine. Oh shit. Wait, what? Uh, man. Uh, always happens when I rush readings. Aroused consciousness to the sight of Graven Ash, swatting his hand toward the thinning green mist where the voices of Narat once stood moments ago. We will have to take him without Chorus's help. I saw you step in front of me, thank you. Nice. <laughs> Old soldier reflexes. We'll have to go to war without them. Farewell. Oops. Ash passes the stone. Sorry, the Arcana Secrets left behind one of his spies. What does Bear have to say? Forgive the interruption. Hmm. Versus with me. I wish I had enough war. Maybe I want them. The voices of Narat know better. Oh, you are playing a big Khalif. Yes, I will leave you. I've got it. Alright. Well guys, that's that. Looks like I'm just about to do uh some stuff before well, uh, let's actually take a look outside and see if things have changed. Or maybe I shouldn't have. Yeah, you know what, guys? I'm just going to wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time. And uh, we'll proceed for the final battle. And. Ah, oh, man. This game is bugging out hard, guys.